This was Reed hitting his second into the tenth. Straight vertical would not be able to see the ball land at this point. One hop and disappears into the thick rough. There you see it never climbed much more than maybe a foot, two feet maybe up in the air. A, disappeared. Did it bounce? Uh, no, I didn't see it bounce. Guys, I'm going to check it. They said it didn't bounce. You heard him. The first thing he asked the marshal. Did the marshal see the ball bounce? Hey, the marshal said it did not. They said it didn't bounce. Calls so for I official. checked it, and I believe it broke ground, but I'm going to let you make that call. Um, right here. What are you talking about? Embedded ball. Oh. Where's your Feels ball? like, well, I, 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 since I picked it up to check, I mean, it seems like it broke ground, but I want you to double check. They said it didn't then bounce. Uh, mind if I stick my finger yeah, in there? Ahead. That'd be the only way you'd be able to check, isn't it? Right, yeah. Yeah, I feel a lip on it. So. See? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I thought so, you but I just wanted lip. to double check. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So does that T go, where does that T go? You on get it? one club length from that hole. From the hole. Yeah. Used to be as close as you could. Right. Now it's one club Okay. Length. So you can clean that now. Yeah. Just wanted to put that. Sure. So he got a drop, would end up making par. Ken Tack joined us yesterday. His debut as um, part of our new collaboration with the PGA Tour, having a rules official uh, ready and willing to go on the spot. And it didn't take long, Ken. I mean, right after we introduced you, he hit that second shot, and we're in the middle of a firestorm. So you've had a lot of time to look at it, talk about it with your colleagues. It's been discussed all around the world of golf. At that point, what we just saw, did he play the rules of golf to the letter of the law? Yeah, uh, Jim, our committee is uh, very confident um, uh, that he did proceed under the rules properly, and we're very comfortable with the outcome um, for the for the situation. And, you know, one step further, Patrick didn't have to ask for a ruling, and he asked for the rules official, and he just kind of confirmed the fact that the ball was embedded. This is rule 16-4. If a player believes that his or her ball lies in a condition where relief is allowed, but can't decide that without lifting the ball, that player may lift the ball to see if relief is allowed, but the spot must first be marked, which he did, and the lifted ball cannot be cleaned. So rule 16-4 is right behind 16-3, the embedded ball rule. And after the round, there were... A number of people waiting to hear what Patrick Reed's take was on that incident over at the 10th and he joined our Amanda Balionis. Just talk me through what you thought you saw and heard compared to what you now saw in ruling and the big question why did you pick the ball up before you called in the rules official? Well really the biggest thing was right after I hit the golf shot we we all saw the ball going left the whole group did and uh, you know the ball just disappeared none of us saw it bounce and so the first thing we do is when, when we don't see it bounce and the group doesn't see it bounce, you ask the volunteer whoever's closest to that golf ball where it was. And, you know, the volunteer said, no, the ball did not bounce. And therefore, I, when that happened, I looked at my group, says, guys, she didn't see it bounce either. So I'm going to mark this ball and, uh, you know, see if it's embedded. And, you know, once I marked it, the first thing I wanted to do was make sure I got the ball out of my hand because, you know, you don't want to clean it or anything because you don't know if it's embedded yet. And when I put my finger down there and I felt like it has broken ground, first thing you do is you call rules official because you know you want the rules official to come over to make sure that it is. And when the rules official came over, said it yes, no, this this ball has broken the plane, and with no one seeing the ball bounce, you know, that's that's what we all saw. And so because of that, you know the rules official is like, well, since no one else has seen it bounce and it's seven people, therefore you get free drop and free relief. And at that point. You know, we just go with what the rules officials said and also with what the volunteers and what we see because, you know, it's one of those things that when we're out there, we can't see everything. And when that happens, you know, you have to go by with what the volunteers say, with what the rules officials say. And, you know, when when all comes push and shove, we, we felt like we did the right thing and the rules officials said we did it absolutely perfectly. And with that being said, uh, you know, we moved on and just continued playing. Of course, Patrick Reed is always uh, under an intense microscope. And you wonder, is he a victim of uh, reputation, Ken? Because there was another thing that happened yesterday that uh, we got a good look at after we went off the air yesterday, and that involved Rory McIlroy. 
who, of course, has just an impeccable image and a model of integrity. And this was his second shot at 18. We would show the broadcast feed yesterday, his third shot. But here's what happened with his second. Hops and then drops right in the area where the ball had first landed. He's playing with Rory Sabatini. And just listen as he alerts his playing partner that his ball is, in fact, embedded. Is it a club length, Rory, or is it near his foot? Is it club length? So he did not call in a rules official. What is the difference between what happened with Rory at 18 and what would happen uh, previously with Patrick Reed over at the 10th, Ken? Jim, you know, both situations, they're almost nearly the same. Um, as you saw, Patrick did take one step further to ask for the official. But the, the standard in the rules of golf in this situation under Rule 16 is that it's reasonable to conclude that the ball was embedded given the soft conditions around the golf course. Neither one of the players saw the ball land. So there was reason for these guys to mark the ball, lift the ball, to check to see if it was embedded. And in fact, uh, Rory felt that the ball was embedded and proceeded as he, as he does, as every player on the, the tour does often. Uh, it's a very common occurrence when the conditions are soft and uh, we had no problem with it and we're comfortable with the outcome. 